back to a Thursday special edition, special Super Thursday episode. Dan sends his love. He's headed to cover an event. You guys know sometimes that happens with us. Uh, but today, I'm excited. I've been waiting a long time. Had to get the timing right. Just different different factors coming into play. And today's that day, finally, we get to track down one of our favorite softball coaches from Marymount. Um, this amazing leader has been uh, at the top of her game for a long time, continues to just blow us away with her skill set and her leadership presence and and the recruits she is just picking up. And the great thing she's doing with these people on and off the field is just legendary. So I don't want to waste any more time. I want to get right down into it and bring on one of our, our fan favorites, uh, Paige Newsman. Paige, how you doing, Coach? I'm doing great. How about yourself? I'm awesome. I, it's an honor to get to track it down. Um, I've I've watched so many of your videos and your drills, and I feel like I know you guys from afar. Um, you're doing a great thing on and off the field, Coach, and it's it's an impressive feat uh, of what you're doing at this program. So the audience and I, we have some questions. Again, Dane sends his love. He's at an event. But I'm going to run some questions past you. My first question for you, Coach, so I'm going to get right into it. Obviously, before you became that elite high-level coach that you are in your playing days, take me back to when it began, maybe even when you first picked up a ball. How old were you when you started playing, and when did you get the itch for that, you know? Yeah, so I actually got into softball via t-ball. Um, I think a lot of uh, young boys and girls get into the sport that way. Um, but, yep, just would run around the little dirt bases. Um, but my dad would play wiffle ball with us in the backyard. Uh, my sister grew up playing softball, too. But when she got older, she switched on to soccer. Um, so my dad tag teamed, you know, fall soccer and spring softball. Um but yeah, probably all the way back to then, grew up playing Little League, didn't really get into travel ball until I was almost into high school. So I guess you could say I was a late bloomer um, and then just played high level select ball and played high school ball before I went to college. So you're talking, uh, we always joke with, with softball, you know this from even if even coaching the amount of years you have, one season of softball is like 10 human years. So you've had, you have several seasons under you at this point. Did you play oh, other yeah. sports too uh, alongside of softball? Did you play other sports too growing up or? Yeah, so um, I went to a private school until high school, so we always had like middle school sports. Um, so I played volleyball, um, played soccer for the county too, and then I played in my high school as well. So my sister and I shared the love of soccer. Um, I also did my um, junior and senior year, I did track and field, but I just did shot put. Uh, I was not really uh, known for my running abilities, um, at wow. least a little bit on softball, but was not super <laughs> Um, but yeah, well-rounded athlete. I played basketball growing up too, but definitely soccer and softball ended up being my main two focuses. That's crazy. So I maybe somehow integrating shot put into pitching or so, I don't know. That's that's crazy. I'd love to see that. Yeah. Man, to, <laughs> I'm kidding. I I'm totally kidding. Turn off, like the push and the throw. <laughs> no rainbows. I'm kidding. I'm totally kidding. You right. know, I, I can hear it now from because our, our daughters are both pitchers. They and I, so I can already hear it now. That's cool. I, I know that a lot of times our, our coaches encourage their athletes to play multi sports, and I think that's it's so funny. Before doing a lot of these interviews, we were so backwards in our thinking that isn't that going to be a deterrent and every coach I've talked to even yourself it's cool to see that that background of multi multi-talented multi-sport so thinking about the transition right you said about 14 16 you when you went into travel ball when did it start clicking that this is what you're going to do uh, what age were you when you've been all in with softball if you will um, I think my parents kind of held back from the travel ball push for a while. I had tried out for a team when I was 10 years old and I was itching. I was like, please, please, please. And they held us out of it. Um, but I think that ended up being a good thing for my long-term development. Um, but I remember watching, um, I think my first women's college world series on TV when Monica Abbott was pitching um, yeah. and in Tennessee and Arizona state. And I think that was like my first big jolt um, of, Oh my gosh, this is what I want to do. And ever since that year, we would have it on nonstop as much as it was televised. And obviously the publicity and notoriety now of softball is way different than it was when I was, um, you know, in elementary school that had to have been like the mid two thousands. So, um, you know, obviously coming to today's point in softball world, um, it's really awesome to see how um, much streaming has done to change our game. And now just seeing all of postseason play and having also the SEC network, the ACC network, um, Longhorn network. I mean, we're getting to watch softball at all points in the year now. 
I love that. And it's uh, Dana and I talked a lot about, and you, you, you know, my philosophy, we preached all the time. It's so amazing to see female athletics getting the respect it should have gotten from day one. I love it that, you know, you're part of history. If you think about it right now in the past 20 years, the groundswell of the sport, you know, not just softball, but female soccer, female basketball. I mean, there's, there's such a, finally, um, I think we're making that ground up, you know, with, with streaming, like you said, so it's great to see what you're doing. I'm curious, um, the, the itch, cause obviously you have had influences on you, which you've shared. When did you get the coaching itch to do that? Cause you're definitely well loved and people look at you and they know you. When did you get that itch to start coaching? You know? Um, so I think as I was going through high school, I knew I wanted to focus on, um, an exercise based, um, degree path or for my future you know I kind of started as like a physical therapist and then it was okay well maybe occupational therapy you know that would be a little different and then um my major in college was exercise science I ended up going through a pretty rigorous program at my alma mater and um my senior year of college we sat for um certification exam so I'm actually certified to run college conditioning for strength conditioning um so that was what my college realm was um, it wasn't really like my full passion, you know, softball was my passion. I lived and breathed for softball. So I think my senior year, when I was starting to focus on grad school opportunities, I sat down with, um, head coach Margie Knight. Um, she passed away last summer, but she was my head coach for college and she's a legend in the sport as well. I mean, yeah. she had over an 800 win percentage in all of her years as a college coach. Um, yeah. so pretty remarkable person, but she, you know, we were talking and I was telling her about how I wanted to become, um, you know, in my master's degree gotten behind me. And she said, well, why don't you come on staff and be our grad assistant? So got my education at the same time of being able to coach and about halfway through my educational path for my master's, I didn't want to focus on the science anymore. I wanted to dive into coaching. So I switched into higher education from a applied health physiology program. Um, so I got a, got to kind of bridge my both loves there. So definitely later. I love it. And yeah, shout out to coach Margie. We, we've definitely know all about her. It was a legend. Uh, it, it was definitely a, you know, a, a, a blow to the community. So we're, we're glad you got a chance to work with her. So maybe that's uh, as I lead into it, maybe you already know, I look at influences again, not to go back and repeat that, but the influence you've had, I still think of coaches that have had influences on me growing up, even back as young as like nine or 10. And they say, it's interesting that a, a kid won't remember what, the win loss percentage was at 10 or 11, but they'll remember how that coach made him feel right. You, you, you get that. So who's been the biggest influence on you as an athlete and a coach in your life? You know, I don't know. I get asked this sometimes, obviously Margie was a huge critical yeah. role in my development. Um, she kind of took on the later half of my years of softball. Um, and she truly was like a life-changing woman. Um, she stood firm in who she was and she, you know, I think athletes, you know, as we see it from a coaching lens now, it's really hard to see it from an athlete lens when you're in the moment. And, you know, Margie wasn't everyone's favorite person when you're playing for her, but she wasn't meant to be your friend. She was meant to be your person that pushed you and drove you to success so um definitely her um but in my formative years my dad was my huge role model um my dad was like our main caregiver my mom worked full-time so my dad was like stay-at-home dad for us and he carted my sister and I around all of our athletic events um so he's a huge um pivotal person in my life and then my travel ball coach and I had a couple of really great high school coaches but my travel ball coach who's retired from the game his name is Thad Toll um he really kind of took me from um an athlete that wasn't in the travel ball realm so to speak into a person who was ready to go for college so he was huge in my development as well as my other coaches that were on those staffs I love it it's neat to see um the 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 carnal chronological you know order right you've got from littles to college and that's what I tell the kids all the time even with our teams and here in Kansas it's you know girls you might not remember this game but you'll remember the environment the coach your your, your yeah. sisters that you're working with right and that's cool to see that even at the elite level like you are from it even if it's from a 10 to elite like yourself that doesn't go away like the main reason we get into this uh, softball is so much more it's a family it's beyond the field right. right so I love it that what you said you spoke a lot about even that uh, academic side even though we're playing at a high level it's more about okay what else are we doing outside of this world what are we doing off the diamond if you will so that's that's a really cool right. parallel i'm thinking with you know the upcoming uh, fall ball things in the next fall months what's what's uh what's on your agenda as as a coach with the program what do you guys have your sights set on for the next 12 months if you will you know yeah so Goals. um 
I think a lot of coaches right now are kind of mapping out their fall schedule, you know, their practice days, heavy hitting days versus light days, recruiting schedules. Um, and luckily for us in division three, we're seeing a whole landscape change with our practice calendar. Um, you know, I think the NCAA um, committees finally heard that in division three, we want to be treated just like the other divisions and have access to our athletes all year long. I mean, these athletes are coming from touch time with their coaches three, four, five days a week, sometimes more if they're investing in private instruction. And we were getting almost less than that in division three. We were, mm -hmm. we had five weeks to fit our 16 practices in. Um, and outside of those five weeks, we pretty much had to cross our fingers and hope that our athletes were doing something and staying on a positive path, um, whether that was academics wise, you know, family situations. Um, and post COVID, we had this big push to say, hey, we want to see our athletes as much as we can. Um, but still hold true to like the division three mentality. So we're going to have a little bit more flexibility with um, practices with the athletes this semester. So really looking forward to being able to like seeing them all semester long. Um, I have a couple of recruiting opportunities coming up. I'll be um, traveling to North Carolina, Virginia, Florida. Um, those are pretty much like big states for me that I typically frequent. And then um, we actually have fully taken over a softball tournament in our area that we've been running for and helping to run the last two years, but it's called the First Responders Cup. And that um, event is for 9-11 victims. And um, oh, wow. it takes care of uh, charity work that has been used to support 9-11 um, foundations. So that's really big. We're right outside of Washington, D.C. and the Pentagon is not far from our campus. So being an Arlington softball team and having a softball event specifically oh, yeah. for Arlington, those impacted in 9-11, you know, it's really awesome to be able to give back and have that community involvement. That's that's next level. That's that's what it's all about is community. And uh, please let us know um, when when the dates are so we can stream that for you. We'll share the heck out of that, man. We'll put oh, that yeah. all over the map. We would love to. That that's an amazing thing. And that's what I'm saying. What drew us into watching you? And again, we could say all day long about your skill set. That's that's known. But the way you are with people and how you want to give back and the love for people off the field. Those are the kind of things that we love to see in the next generation of athletes, right? As Dana and I always say, coaches like yourself and athletes, no wonder the sport's in such good hands. So, yes, please let us know. We will share the heck out of that for you. I'd be glad to, okay? So, definitely. Love, love it. There's a segment we're going to transition to. I told you I'm going to make you laugh. Um, this is the only part uh, we never, ever give our guests prep for. We want it to be just a surprise, as Dana is usually just surprised too. We'll bet on these questions. Usually, him and I bet okay. on lunch or things. Now, our, our fans give us some interesting, weird, random, time doesn't exist, alternate reality questions. They're PG, but they're meant to make you think, and you got to pick one. It's meant to focus on your personality to kind of get to know you a little bit better as a personality. And I think I'm going to make you laugh. So, the first question. I would bet uh, if Dane was here. So imagine that you're showing up, it's opening game. You're doing, let's say a fall ball tournament and you're doing a camp the day before. You're teaching some littles. We'll say we're going to do 12 you. And an exercise that you have to do, you have to get all of them to build trust by having a dodgeball tournament. But the caveat is you don't get to use dodgeballs. You have two objects that you get to use that they have to play with. And again, we'll say everything's cool. Waivers are signed, so nobody's going to get, you know, bad or nothing. <laughs> you either go with A, cantaloupes, or B, volleyballs, or excuse me, beach balls. So cantaloupes or beach balls, what are you going to use to teach these littles in a game of dodgeball? Oh my gosh. Well, I wouldn't be able to throw a beach ball at all. It would <laughs> so I personally would go with cantaloupes and Got I'd be you. like, duke it out, man. Let's go. I love it. I knew it. Got you. So next question. Oh, we're going to say along with, uh, you know, a lot of times with uh, um, celebrity events showing up, you're, you're called up next year to to actually be a, uh, a guest player coaches ball we're gonna have a at, at the world series next year it's an all coaches game right all coaches from across d1 d3 you show up and you you get to play first base or outfield those are the two positions you get to choose here's the caveat playing first base you got to wear a kangaroo outfit in the middle of august you got to do it or you can play outfield but you got to wear cowgirl boots so kangaroo outfit at first or cowgirl boots and outfield for this coaches tournament what are you going with Okay, I'm gonna go with outfield because I love playing outfield in slow pitch and I never got, got to you. do it. I was terrible at playing the outfield. 
when I was got in you. College, so get me out. Two for two. Oh, two for two. Let's go. All right, cool, awesome. So, next question. There's a they they like a lot of what if movie questions, as if right, like what if. So we're gonna do a remake in the year 2025, starring Paige Newsman's biography, the upcoming remake of A League of Their Own, and it's gonna be about you and we're going to transition that in you get two actresses that you get to choose to play you as you like you're the contributing script writer and all that stuff you get to choose from either a jennifer lawrence or b dua lipa you know she's got some some hits right now are you going with yeah. jennifer lawrence or dua lipa to play you in the remake of Paige newsman's a league of their own okay i'm gonna do j-law because she was in the hunger games and i love go. that series, so. three for three let's go i love it got you okay so flip the script. That's who you got to play you. Now you're asked to play in a movie. Again, going down this path, a lot of athletes, a lot of coaches, a lot of times people in media find their way into movie roles, right? So I'm just saying there may be an acting career for you one day. We're just going to put it out there. And so you have a chance to play two of these celebrity icons, okay? Um, uh, what's the word? Famous roles. You can either be the next upcoming superwoman in 2025 that's one or the first ever historic event you can be the next chapter of indiana jones so either superwoman indiana jones which one are you go with indiana jones indiana let's jones let's go four for four i love it good 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 okay so i'm four for four last one recruiting you talk about recruiting uh, you know recruiting is a huge part of what you guys do it's everything that goes into what you do um have to have it so imagine with all your recruits, you set it up to where you almost give them a secret location to, hey, meet me at a certain place. And you, when you show up, your grand entrance, every time you go to meet one of your recruits, you have two things you can do to show, like to show up. Option one, you can ride in off a ramp on a dirt bike, kind of slide sideways to high on page newsman. Or B, you can ride in on the back of a rhino with like with a fan and all that. So you're coming up motorcycle or rhino as I come out to meet you. Which one are you going with? Oh my gosh. That's a hard one. Okay, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna picture go it. with a rhino because I would not fall on my face on the so like when you're recruiting, when you're going through North Carolina, I expect to see that. Let's get a live stream of it. You're just rolling into town on a rhino yeah. and then people come yeah. up to you. I need to see that. Okay. I'm going to so. raid the North Carolina Zoo and make that happen. <laughs> let's go. Well, thank you, Paige. Again, hopefully in interviews you've had, we try to set aside a segment that no one's asked you questions like that before. So thanks for being a good sport. So I'll transition. Sure. I was four for five. So I, I did get the, uh, I did get the uh, second question wrong. We got the others right. So thank you for being a good sport. Last segment, again, because you know you're busy. We always transition to something that's called open mic. And what this really is, is we know coaches, um, I think it's something that's born into coaches. They typically have a mantra, a philosophy, something that's made them tick. Uh, maybe their philosophy on life on and off the field, uh, wisdom sometimes to pass on, right? There's a lot of athletes that watch the show. Um, there's a lot of you know, doctors and lawyers and maybe musicians, people that want to aspire to be something, um, you know, outside of what they are. So what's a piece of advice or maybe a mantra you'd give those listening that want to be, want to be you one day? Just be yourself. I don't know. I just, I, I really have stayed true to who I am. I'm not afraid to kind of get in the mix of things. Um, so yeah, like be yourself first and foremost, be a confident version of yourself. Um, I think confidence can take you so far, um, even if you don't necessarily have the experience and you have a vision, you know what you want out of that, those next steps. If you're not confident in who you are, how can you convince someone else that you can do that job the way you want it done? Um, mm. But yeah, that has been like my dad always taught us to be confident individuals because especially as females, like exude confidence, be who you are. So mm. that served me so well as a, in my professional life and just as a person. I love that. And it's, we talk a lot about with, with athletes and even musicians, right? There's such a, uh, there's such a uh, magnetizing uh, attraction to people that are themselves like genuine, right? I think we've reached that point in the world, which is nice. Finally, where it's okay to just be who you are and people celebrate that. It's like, we've been working so hard to get there to just, I don't have to fit in. I can be me and people are going to gravitate to that. Right. I love that. When you said the confidence thing, it reminded me of this dad joke. I have to tell you. So there's a dad joke that correlates with confidence this pilot's taking people from you know like midwest to hawaii comes across the intercom and says folks i got good news and bad news the bad news is we're lost we have no idea where we're going but the good news is we're making great time <laughs> and so it made me think I <laughs> when you said confidence so you know just the confidence of even if you don't know where you're going and let's figure it out thankfully 
you super know where you're going. Absolutely. You know where you're going. And uh, you can tell Hi. the program's a good hand. So coach, I, I mean it when I say I'm, I'm sorry about the timing, but I'm glad we could do it the right way and showcase you with the episode you deserve. Um, I can't wait to be watching fall ball on your tournaments. Let us know. Please let it also be known this is the first of many. We'd love to have you back in the future. Um, it's an open invitation because you're part of the alum now. Okay. So awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Uh, awesome, Coach. I'll give you some time back in the day. You're welcome to hang up and thank you for your time. And we'll be in touch very soon. Okay. Appreciate you so okay. much. Okay, Thanks, great. Coach. Have a good one. You too. So guys, that's uh that's Paige. I'm telling you, I when I first started talking to her, I felt like I met a friend from day one and she is not fake at all. What you see is what you get. And just a genuine, great, kind person. What do you say about that? That's just awesome. I wish Dane was here to help me contain my excitement, but he's not here to, to bridle me in today. So that was awesome. Uh, great coach doing great things. Marymount. We'll make sure we link her. Um, Got to look him up. Coaches like that talking about being who you are, being confident, following your dreams. That's what we want to talk about. And this is what this show is all about is it's okay to be what you want to be. You don't have to apologize for that. It, maybe it's not sports. Maybe it's not music. Maybe you have a path you want to follow. Go for it. Be, be confident that you can do it. So Paige, that was a great episode. Thank you for taking the time to do that. You guys, we've got some great ones coming up. I won't even... I won't even go into all the ones that we have coming up. We've got a lot of surprises. Um, you guys are going to be in for some uh, even more treats. Uh, they just keep you know, rolling along, keep getting better and better. So um, this Thursday special matinee, if you will. I appreciate you, Paige, for doing that. Thank you, Marymount College, for loaning um, your awesome coach to us. Don't forget, as always, that we love you. And as Dane would say, thank you for listening.